Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So remember, this is my anniversary Telecaster and I built this guitar for my 20th anniversary of my wedding. And I really like the guitar. It's got a really cool body. Obviously I like the pickups and the sound and it's got this really nice roasted maple neck. But if you remember, I recently disassembled a 1992 American Standard Telecaster and this is the neck from that project. And I've been staring at this thing and man, I really love the fret job on it it and I love everything about it. It's a really nice neck. It's just not been played very much and it's in really good shape. So I want to go ahead and try to install this neck on this body. In the process, I thought I would show you how you would retrofit a micro tilt setup into a body that does not have micro tilt in it. All right, so we're going to get started by removing the strings and I want to be able to reuse these strings. I'm not going to be pulling them back through the bridge. They're just going to sit loose and hopefully I don't have to cut anything off. Alright, so with the strings off and set to the side, I can set about with removing this neck and that's going to be step one of the process. So let's do that first. Alright, so if you remember, when I installed this neck initially, I was kind of hoping that it was a 2022 neck, just because that was the year of my anniversary. And this neck actually happened to be a 2021 neck, so it had that going against it initially. Now, I really don't have any sort of affinity to the year 1992. It's just a really nice neck. So if I'm going neck against neck with no affinity to the date codes, I would really prefer to have this 1992 on there. Alright, so let's start by talking about what an American Telecaster body looks like like with the micro tilt installed. So if you notice the T-nut that's installed in this body is recessed quite deep. The other thing is that it's exactly in line with the two screw holes for the neck. So that's how we're going to install the new one in the same line as these two neck screws right in the middle. All right so here's the actual neck pocket of the body that we're working on today. So I'm going to try to find the edges of the two holes on the very inside. Let's call it 1.36, which means that basically we would need half of that distance, which would be 0.68. All right, there's 0.68. That would put that mark somewhere in that range. So I'm going to mark that with a pencil. All right, well, my mark is pretty close. Just as a mental note, I'm going to come to the very inside edge of my mark on the side that's closest to me. And that seems to be basically my middle point. Now let's go ahead and establish a straight line between the two holes here. So let me grab a punch. All right, so the idea here is that I'm going to set my punch exactly at that center point and on the line between the two screws or to the two holes for the screws. And I'm going to go ahead and just make a starter divot here. Now that's deep, but that's the way I want it for the bit that I'm about to use for this drilling operation, which is the Forstner bit. All right, so what are we gonna do here in this neck pocket? So first of all, we have to come up with the hardware we're gonna use for this. And there's two pieces. One is a Allen screw that goes inside of the nut. And the other piece is the nut, which is a T-nut. Now a T-nut has some teeth that actually grab into the wood in the body. And it's got this collar that seats down into a hole inside the body. So there's two pieces we have to measure. One is the size of the collar itself. I'll tell you right now, I've already measured the hole inside the body on the fender and it's 3 8 But this collar is 0.3 inches almost exactly. The size of the T-nut itself, which is going to determine what size Forstner bit we use to drill out the hole for this T-nut is 0.74 and change. So we need a three quarter inch bit to drill out the hole for this T-nut and then we need probably a 3 8 inch bit to drill out the hole that will receive this collar. I might actually not drill that all the way through at 3 8 I might drill it halfway through at 3 8 and then flip this guitar over and drill a hole about a quarter inch because a quarter inch is closer to the size of the hole in the neck plate. All right, so we're ready to drill this hole out with the Forstner bit. Now, how deep do I go? So the depth of this has to be deep enough to receive the T-nut and not allow the T-nut to protrude above the surface of the hole that we're going to drill here. So not very deep. It's really just about 0.55 inches, 
but we're gonna drill it just a little bit deeper. An eighth of an inch would be way too far, but somewhere in the neighborhood of a 16th. It doesn't have to be exact, it just cannot protrude. All right, well, you can see the depth that I drilled the hole for the T-nut, and if I was to put the T-nut in place, you can see it does not protrude above the surface. I've got it upside down, obviously, now, but it basically receives the T-nut. So now we just need to finish out drilling this hole that's in the middle for at least half the distance of the body, and then I can flip the body over and we'll finish up the drilling on the other side. I think I'm actually gonna start with a 5 16th and see if that receives the collar, because it's really close. That's about halfway, let me clean that up. Okay, with the hole cleaned up, let's try and see. Oh, actually, yeah, that's gonna work out just great. We're going to flip this guitar body over and we're gonna find the center point between these last two screws on the other side and drill that out to a quarter inch and hopefully we meet up with the hole we just made. All right, the distance between the edges is about 1.3. We're gonna half that, so we're gonna go down to about 0.65. Mark it. Double check both measurements, they look good. I'm gonna draw a line between, and we should be really close right there. So let me go ahead and mark this. Then we'll drill that out to a quarter. Okay, well back here on the front side, it looks like everything's lining up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install this T-nut. And really all I need to do is make sure that I get it lined up with the collar hole and that my Forstner bit hole is going to receive the actual head of the T-nut, and it looks like it is, so now I just need to hammer it home. All right, well, I think that's going to work out perfectly. It's totally under the surface of the neck pocket, and it's contained within the holes, so I believe we can move on to installing the neck. Mounting the neck is just a matter of setting it in place, and it looks like everything is received properly. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this guitar over, set the fender neck plate in place, and start the screws. And then we just run those screws in. And right now, I'm just checking for things like the fact that the hole for the micro tilt is lining up. Now, I'm not saying that once I get these neck screws tightened down, the neck will be in its final position, because we do have to check for the alignment of the strings, but everything's looking good so far. All right, well that looks good. Everything lines up. And at this point, I should note, I don't have the screw positioned in the micro tilt where it's actually doing anything right now. It's not actually making contact with the disc that's on the bottom of the neck. But I might want to, just to discourage any rattles that might go on inside there, go ahead and tighten up the screw against the plate. It really won't make any difference on the neck tilt, but I might just run it up just to make sure. All right, so I've tightened down this screw. It's not gonna rattle, and I can go about installing the strings now, which are actually still on here. Just need to unroll them. All right, now reinstalling a set of used strings is not always the easiest thing in the world, but it's, it's not terribly difficult. You just have to find the exact place where your strings broke across the tuner before, set them in place, and wind pretty quickly in order to get the string to go back where it was before. All right, well, I've got two down. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these off camera, but you get the idea. All right, well, when the strings are installed, you need to check for string alignment, which means that you've got about the same amount of space on each side of the fretboard between the E strings. And if you're off a little bit, just loosen the neck screws and tweak the neck in the pocket just a little bit. Uh, that's basically it. Now, what I need to do next, and I won't show all these steps on camera because I've done this many times before, but basically I need to set the action and I need to set the neck relief and the pickup height. I think I'm pretty much done with this guitar. I will go ahead and adjust the action off camera, check out the upper frets, make sure there's nothing that's like fretting out or you know buzzing up here in the in the heel area. And if that's okay, then I'll call this one done. All right, well, a little bit of good news. Everything's working out just fine. Everything's centered up. My intonation was pretty close to correct. I've got my action set at 464 at the 17th fret. I've got the pickup height, the bridge, set at 664 and 864. Yeah, everything works well, doesn't fret out anywhere, no buzzing. 
So this one's really done. I've enjoyed working on this project. If you do need to adjust your micro tilt, you're gonna loosen these four screws, put some tilt in it by tightening the Allen screw a little bit, and then tighten your screws back up. And even though I did install micro tilt in this body, I have to be honest, I'm not a big fan of using micro tilt in general. I think it's actually better practice to put a full length shim in the neck instead of just trying to introduce a little bit of height under the last screw. But I've enjoyed doing this for you guys. Thank you all for the likes. Thank you all for the comments. I really love the subscriptions, and I'll see you guys next time.